Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're back out at the range with some Bullpup 12 gauge shotguns. This is the Model 500 Mossberg that we showed you in a previous video. When I posted the video, of course I read the comments and I noticed a lot of you guys were talking about a high standard Model 10, which is another Bullpup shotgun that was predates this one actually and was designed in the 1950s. So I thought, what the heck, let's break out the high standard Model 10B. But before we do that, let's fire this Mossberg Model 500. Yep, pump action, pretty darn reliable. Now, how reliable is the high standard Model 10B? Let's find out. Here's my high standard Model 10B, and we'll talk about the differences between the A and the B. Uh, I don't have an A. The A would have had an integrated flashlight here on the top, and it was this big, huge flashlight that was molded into the polymer housing that's, that is basically around this high standard C1200 Supermatic 12 gauge shotgun, which is the core of this basic bullpup. All they did was take the wood furniture off, stick it into this polymer chassis, relocate the trigger, and they had a bullpup. But again, the Model A or the original had a big carrying handle and flashlight up here. So they got rid of that, and then they came up with this bracket mount system to put a flashlight onto the shotgun later should you want one. And keep in mind, in the 50s and 60s, flashlights were huge. And uh, yeah, and you didn't have a whole lot of lumens, right, or candela back then. Those, the lights were pretty bad. And so the B came along, it got rid of the integrated light, gave you a modular light option, gave you a folding front sight, now has a carrying handle, and then they put a charging handle on the left-hand side of the receiver, so you have a charging handle here now that's non-reciprocating, and you have a charging handle here on the bolt as well. It maintained its swiveling butt pad, which we'll talk about its use here in a little bit. But yeah, I, uh, I got a lot of comments about this shotgun on my Mossberg video, and a lot of people referenced the, uh, it wasn't in range, I believe it was on Forgotten Weapons, Ian had done a, a segment on this shotgun, and his simply did not work. It had a broken part, and the gun was not functioning. And a lot of people said that the gun was inherently flawed or was perhaps unreliable. Now, that's not been my experience with this shotgun, but keep in mind I haven't shot it extensively either over the years. So, the gun was definitely designed to use warmer shotgun shells. So, we're going to shoot buckshot out of it. It's not intended to shoot birdshot or anything like that. A guy by the name of Alfred Crouch, I believe was his last name. He was a sergeant with the Santa Monica Police Department designed this shotgun, and he based it off an early auto-loading Remington design, and then he sold the design to High Standard, who went into production with it. And his intent was to turn this thing into the ultimate, you know, fighting shotgun for SWAT teams and tactical units, which is why it had the light mounted on it and the bullpup chassis, so you could enter, you know, a CQB environment. I think we all know the benefits of a bullpup by now, and so that's why he designed it. So, this would be the last iteration of the gun. This is its original sling that came with it when I got it, but it was not new when I bought it. Uh, you have a notched fixed rear sight here, and then this blade, again, folding front sight on the shotgun. The carrying handle just kind of flops around, and then we have a locking screw here with a bracket for that light that you could use later. To load the gun up, it loads just like pretty much any other shotgun out there. This one only holds four rounds. Uh, pain to, to load. You got to push the release button, put the shotgun shell in there. And I do notice that the rounds hang up a little bit going into the magazine tube. There's three rounds in there. And there we go. That's the fourth one. Now to charge it, I can either pull the bolt to the rear here using the charging handle directly on the bolt, or I can use the one on the left side of the receiver, and it's now ready to fire. It has a simple cross block safety here in the front. That way is safe, that way is fire. When you push it that way, a little red ring appears, and you can see it. Again, it's definitely intended for the, uh, the right-handed shooter. If you're left-handed, you're not going to shoot this shotgun. Now, I'm preparing myself because this thing has brutal recoil. Now, this has no recoil pad whatsoever, so you just have a, a metal butt plate here that has like a rubber material around it. 
and the shotgun <laughs> is quite a handful. All right, here we go. There you go. So now you could get this with an extended tube that would hold up to six rounds. And I believe it might've even had a longer barrel. I've only seen pictures of them. Um, I've never sought to buy one, but it would be cool to have more than just four rounds, five if you top the shotgun off. So that's it. Let's talk about this, slinging, uh, this swiveling butt plate here and get a closer look at this high standard Model 10B 12 gauge shotgun. We are 100% viewer supported. We take no money from the industry. We're supported via Patreon. There is a link down below. If you'd like to support us, please follow that link and check out some of our support tier levels. Another way that you can support us here at the Military Arms Channel is to pick up one of our t-shirts like this new CNN shirt. And you can do that by following the link in the description below. This swiveling butt plate is more of a nuisance than it is anything that's very practical. It has a sling attached to one side of it and all it really is good for is getting tangled up in your sling. If you were using this as a police officer, I would highly recommend ditching the sling. Matter of fact, if I could, I'd probably just fix this um, thing in one position like this so it didn't swivel because it's just annoying. Sometimes it goes to your shoulder like this and that can be very painful if you fire it in your shoulder like that. So, but the reason it swiveled was because they had the bright idea, or the original designer had the bright idea, that you could fire it from the hip. Now, I never understood this whole hip firing concept because this is actually kind of pointless. And today we know that. We shoulder our long arms and we don't do the whole 80s hip fire much anymore. But keep in mind, when this was designed, you still had the FBI crouch being taught to FBI agents in this thing. Um, I guess they would want to fire it from the bicep like this. So let's go ahead and load it up again. We have some S&B ammunition. This is just some old junk. It's not actually very good ammo. I've actually had it cause malfunctions in other shotguns. Let's go ahead and load this thing up again. This time we're going to put five rounds in it. We're going to top it off. It's not as smooth to load as other shotguns. I'm pushing the release button to release the, uh, the riser here so I can push the shells in. All right, I think that was four. Take the safety off. Let's try firing it here from the arm, from the bicep. This probably is gonna hurt. <laughs> yes, it hurts. Yeah, that is not pleasant at all, but it works. And the shotgun, you notice all that smoke. These S&B loads uh, have caused other shotguns to malfunction, so I'm really surprised that the, uh, the little high standard's running so well with them. Go ahead and load it up again. Load it up with another five rounds. Loading the shotgun is slow. It's not something you're gonna do very easily in a high-stress environment. I think that was three. Should be four here. All right. And let's fire it one more time, this time from the shoulder. Yeah, from the shoulder, it's not all that bad. It's actually a fun little shotgun to shoot. Now, as you can see, the gun's working just fine. Ian, unfortunately, just had a broken example of the shotgun. I don't have enough to completely top it off here, so we only got four rounds. Let's fire off these last four. See what I'm talking about, what a nuisance that butt plate is? The carrying handle can be a pain in the rear end too. There were four rounds in there. So, no malfunctions. As a matter of fact, I've never had any malfunctions with this shotgun as long as I'm shooting fairly stout loads, like buckshot. I'm not gonna take the gun apart. I'll link to Ian's video down below because he goes into great detail, since he couldn't really shoot the gun all that much in his video, he goes into great detail about how to field strip this thing, which it is a nightmare, and why I'm not gonna do it here in the field for you this afternoon. All right, so we're over at the former ice hole, which is now a water hole again, and we're gonna shoot some buckshot out there for your shooting pleasure. Go ahead and charge 
the shotgun with one in the tube. And again, you got to hit this release button over here, so you have to hold it in your left hand to load it. You're not going to do it. It's not a one-hand operation, unfortunately. Get that fourth round in there. All right. Definitely would be nice having that six-round magazine. All right. Here we go. Now, if you wanted to, you could throw a shotgun shell in like this and hit the release button and keep firing. But that's less than ideal. But like I said, it's a fun little shotgun to shoot. I don't take this thing out nearly enough because if I do, I know I gotta take it apart and clean it, and it's a nightmare. All right. Get a few more rounds of buckshot to the former ice hole here. Shoot a little bit closer. <laughs> yeah, like I said, it's actually a great performing little shotgun. It's lightweight, and uh, the recoil's pretty obnoxious, but if you shoot shotguns, you'll get used to it. It's not that bad. You'll have a little bit of a red shoulder when you're done shooting it for the afternoon. But reliability has always been there for me on mine. I hope you guys enjoyed coming out this afternoon to spend some time on the range with the High Standard 10B shotgun. I, uh, I wanted to make this video because so many people were saying that this shotgun was a piece of junk, and that's really not true. It was quite innovative for its time, and the gun, when in proper working condition, actually runs just fine. It's a pain to take apart, not something that I enjoy doing. So yeah, there's that. But that's what happens when you take a standard self-loading shotgun and take the standard furniture off of it and then try to shoehorn it into a polymer chassis to make it into a bullpup, which still seems to be what most people do. Uh, you have Bullpups Unlimited out there that's offering bullpup kits for 870s and I believe Mossberg Model 500s. So people are still doing it and finding the utilitarian value in having such a short, handy little shotgun that doesn't require NFA paperwork. I mean, look how small this thing is, and it is lightweight. If you guys would like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, one way you can do that is to swing by Copper Custom, which is our online store. I would put a link to it, but uh, yeah, YouTube doesn't want you practicing your Second Amendment rights. Also, we are Twitch gamers. If you'd like to join us on a live stream, follow the link down below. Hit the subscribe button or the follow button over on Twitch. And if you're a Patreon supporter, you can actually jump in some of the live streams with us. Guys, thanks for 11 years of support, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Yep. Time to go see the doctor. <laughs> it's not that bad.